Good morning, everybody. Just a few words before we begin. Uh, our men's and women's groups meet this week. A Christian life, as, I, as I'm sure you know, is a team sport, so I'd encourage you to consider dropping in uh, for the prayer and fellowship of those groups. Uh, Peter's Pence, which is May's Beyond the Tithe appeal, wraps up this week. The Peter's Pence collection helps the Holy Father provide emergency assistance to people who need it throughout the world. Uh, you can give to this collection in all of the regular ways. The Monday following Pentecost is now celebrated as Mary, Mother of the Church. So we'll celebrate uh, that feast tomorrow along with Memorial Day here in the church. For more of what's going on, check out the parishioner portal online or a parish bulletin. Uh, be in touch with us in the parish office for further assistance of any sort. Pentecost marks the end and the goal of the Easter season. It is our commemoration of the day the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles and the Virgin Mary in the form of fiery tongues, an event that took place 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. The Paschal mystery, the passion, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus culminates in the sending of the Holy Spirit on Jesus' disciples. The feast also commemorates the official inauguration or the birthday of the church by the apostles' proclamation of Jesus' victory over sin and death. The readings and prayers of today's Mass remind us that Pentecost is an event of both the past and the present. Our readings remind us that the gift of the Holy Spirit moves its recipients to action, inspiring them to live under and advance the rule of Christ the King. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, and our Mass is offered for Paul Ruffin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Frisia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, 
Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, it's a, this is a powerful gospel passage, passage of course. Uh, it's, a, it's a powerful feast that we celebrate today, uh, the, the outpouring of the Spirit, Pentecost Sunday. And of course, yeah, it's, you know, we're commemorating that event 2,000 years ago, and I, and I can see that some of you are commemorating it with, with real zeal, the red, and the little kind of grins that, <laughs> that I'm observing as I look out there. So. I see you, you know, we're, we're, do, we're doing this red thing together. I got the shoes on, so we'll have to check it. We'll have to see who's got them, who, who went uh, the full nine today. So, uh, yeah, this is, um, it, but there's, there's so much power in this feast because, of course, it, it's not simply the, the remnant of a 2,000-year-old celebration. It, it, th that celebration is renewed again today as Jesus pours his Holy Spirit into us, as he breathes God's own breath into us uh, so that we can be animated and sustained by God's own life of love. I mean, it's tremendously powerful. Uh, I mean, it, it brings uh, tears of, of repentance uh, to my own eyes. Of course, I know that, you know, tears are not, uh, not the point of repentance or even the, the sign of, of true repentance, but, but a life lived for God, allowing him to do his work is, uh, is, what we, is what we want to be caught up in, right? So whether or not we have the, the tears of repentance, considering the forgiveness of sins today, or we're simply, you know, happy to be here and celebrate this, this great feast, uh, so be it, okay? But that's enough uh, kind of clearing of the throat. You know that I, you, you know I want to get down to business here, so we're going to try to do that. There, there's, a, there's a sign lo located in the passage that pushes us um, into like what is actually going on here. In fact, a couple of signs. One is that John is keen to stress that in the evening of that first day of the week, right, we, th this language is, is lifted right from Genesis, right? The, the seven days of, of God's good creation, the seven days of our week, the evening of that first day of the week. And then what we see as we, uh, as we drop down into the passage, Jesus says to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. What does he do? When he had said this, he breathed on them. And this is reminiscent of, uh, of God's work, Genesis, uh, Genesis 2, 7, where he breathes life into the nostrils of Adam. Yeah? No one's, no one's looking around thinking, oh, that's disgusting, right? So, I mean, uh, did you hear what I said? <laughs> you know? God breathing life into, into Adam's nostrils. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Jesus went around the room and was breathing into people's nostrils. Ah, he, he might have been. It's not the way that I would have done it. But uh, you know, breathing on them, I, it's not even... There is some sense, right? Breath, spirit, and the like, uh, they're, all the same, they're all the same word in Hebrew and Greek. But the, but the breath that, that they would have experienced, his own breath, right? Can you imagine breathing in the life of Jesus? And, I, and of course, we don't have to imagine breathing in the life of Jesus because that's what we do. We breathe in the life of Jesus when we receive the Holy Spirit. And this is what Jesus does, okay? Now, that, the account of Genesis ought to, ought to uh, have us remember our place in God's creation. Yeah? If... And if I get repetitive here, good. <laughs> it, just means, it just means you're remembering what I'm trying to stress these days, right? It, right. What is man's position in creation? And we see this in, in Genesis as well. God creates the invisible realm, right? He, he creates the heaven or the heavens, and he creates the, the material world, the earth, the, the universe, right? Those things that we can put under a microscope and measure and, or, um, or, or get at with our, own, with our own senses. And then he creates a third category, and, he, and, and that creation is a heaven and earth creature. 
and that's man. Yeah, and some of the ways like, that, that we see it, that we see that come to be in the scriptures is that God is breathing his own life into material. He's breathing his own life into what is otherwise just part of his physical world in order that man might be that, say, third category of being, right? But it's not as though God said, okay, well, you know, I've got, I've got this column A thing, right, this heaven thing, and, and the, the invisible creation. I've got this column B thing, the, you know, the material world and, and the rest. And I want, you know, I want to have column C as well, right? I, it's not the way, it's not what is in God's mind as he does that. What's in God's mind is that he, he wants a creature that will tie one to the other and serve as a conduit for the two of them, the go-between, right, the intersection. So, my friends, we are that creature that lives at the intersection of heaven and earth. It, heaven and earth come together in us. Yeah, this is, and, and it's not simply that, again, we're, these are static realities. We're column C sitting out there somewhere. No, these are active realities in the sense that we have a job to do because we are that creature. Right? And the job that we have to do is bring earth to heaven and bring heaven to earth. And wh whether or not, I would say, whether or not we, um, we, we intend to do that, or at least at this point have intend to do that, it's actually something that we do by our constitution. So it's something that you're going to do regardless of your intention. You are go and, and, uh, and again, this in the scriptures, we, we talk about this in any number of ways. And one of the most powerful ways, I think, to talk about it, the action of bringing earth to heaven is priestly action. And the action of bringing heaven to earth is kingly action. So we talk about Israel and then us, we, the new Israel, as a royal nation, as a, as a, as a royal kingship, a nation of priests is another way that the scriptures talk about it. Okay, so this is our task. Our task is to bring earth to heaven as priests, and you are priests. Right? When was the last time you saw baptism? We've got to baptize more people around here. What are you guys? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> okay, 9 o'clock. Someone's got to come up with a baptism at a 9 o'clock mass sometime soon, okay? You're in, in your baptism, you're anointed priest, prophet, and king. And it's not simply, be, you know, we didn't, like, uh, come up with words to say, okay, be, like, we didn't say, we didn't say, okay, we really want to put some oil on this guy on this baby, so we're going to come up with a reason for it and go priest, prophet, and king. No, the reality is that we are there marked out as God's priests, prophets, and kings. We'll talk about prophet some other time. But the important thing for, for this is that we're, we, you are priests and kings. We talk about the priesthood of the baptized or the common priesthood. That's the priesthood that we all share as followers of Christ. Yeah. And you are kings. You do rule over the corner of creation that God has entrusted to you. You do. How we want to make sure you're doing it in the right way. But we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay? So but this is this is us. In creation, we're set out that way. The third creature, the creature of heaven and earth. Now, in the new creation, the same. We don't lose our position in creation because God is recreating the world. Quite the contrary. We experience renewal now. The renewed people, the renewed image bearers, the renewed people of God in our place, in our place of toil and struggle and challenges and discomfort and all the rest, to be the, to be the image bearers, to be the people who will channel earth for heaven and heaven for earth right where we are in anticipation of the day that God will renew all things and bring his new creation to completion with a new creation of, of heaven and earth. But already that creature at the, at the very heart of it is, is to be at work in the world, to, to be a part of God's work in the world. Okay, so I'm taking my time with it. Yeah? Do you realize that? Oh, yeah, anyway. I'm taking my time with I'm taking my time with it because this is probably it, this is really kind of top concept stuff. If we don't if we don't get this, we're not going to get much in the Christian life. We're really not. If we don't see that our, our life as Christians is to be priests and kings, 
we're going to struggle with all of the rest of it. We won't really understand what it is we're meant to be doing in the world. And I want to give you some of that sense because we pray these prayers today, right? Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How is that going to happen? That's going to happen in you and through you, right? So I'm just, I have to give you the instruction today. Okay, this is just, this is just the way it is. Okay, so... <laughs> This intimate personal relationship where Jesus is breathing his life into us is what sustains us in the task. Jesus has done everything that love can do, and so now as he breathes his life of love into us, we are ready to take on the challenges that, that we face, and they, and they are many, in, both, in exercising both our priesthood and our kingship. Okay, but I want to get, I want to get into the in practical detail some of, the, some of the implications of our living as priests and kings. And the first one, which, which many of you probably have, have heard any number of times already, is that we have to pray acts every day, okay? Father Wade knows he's heard it about 50 times for me. And this is not just a preaching point for me. When we go over to the house, I'm going to tell him, did you pray acts today? You know, did you pray acts today? And what do I mean? Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. These are, these are the four categories of prayer, and that is, can I say, exhaustive, right? Any Christian prayer is going to be adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication, or supplication. What I'm saying is, as God's priests and kings, we have to give ourselves over to adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, supplication every day, and we have to pray it in that order every day. I was saying earlier this week, and he's going to be listening to the he's going to be listening to this on podcast. So I'm sorry, John, but I have to do it again. He the, the, he says to me, he said, "Father, I'm not praying. <laughs> sorry, I'm not praying acts every day. I'm praying cats every day." <laughs> so, I say, "Cats every day? That sounds horrible." <laughs> I won't. Okay, reserve comment on cats. Okay, but I said, contrition, adoration, thanksgiving, supplication. Don't mess up the order. I said, you can mess up the order if you are under my personal care in spiritual direction, then we can work it out, okay? We can do that. But if you're not, then you have to pray acts every day, not cats every day. Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, supplication. Why? Because the most important thing in the world is for us to get a good look at who God is and adore Him. It contextualizes everything. If we begin with contrition, we cannot see past our own failures. We won't be able to do it. We won't be able to do it to praise God. We have to start with adoring Him. Adoring Him as He has revealed Himself to be. And He has revealed Himself here in the Scriptures as the God who what? The God who conquers death. But how does He do it? Right? The God who conquers death with forgiving love. With self-giving love. The God who is nothing other than radical generosity. This is the God that we adore. This is the God that we love. The God who, to advance his own agenda in the world, right, to advance his kingship, washes feet. That's the God we adore. And we get a, we get a look at him and we love him. That's adoration. Right? So you have to do that. We can do it, you can do it in your own words. I'm just giving you some images of, the, of how it is we're going to turn to God and praise him and adore him in adoration. And in contrition, right, as I'm praising God for who he is, uh, an eternal exchange of glorifying love, he's nothing other than radical generosity. Guess what? I get to look at myself in the rearview mirror and say, my whole life is not radical generosity. I'm not radically generous to everyone I encounter. And I ask God, straighten me out. Put me to rights. Help me to be that image bearer you've created me to be. Right? Get, my, get, my, get the vision of heaven right. Get my vision of heavenly life, God's own life right, so that I can embody that life. And as he, as he straightens me out, pours his spirit into me, he makes me ready for the outpouring of self that he, that he would have me do or have me be as I go about the rest of my day. Yeah, so again, adoration, contrition, they, they work together in that vertical plane. This is how we bring earth to heaven, is by adoration and contrition. Why? Because we're doing it in ourselves. 
right? It's my heart that adores God. It's my, it's, it's my physicality, right? It's, it's what I have, who I am, that is praising God. That's an, that is a priestly act. And when we turn to God in praise, we are performing priestly acts, and we have to, yeah? So adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, supplication. Thanksgiving is a matter of looking out at the world, looking out at the corner of creation that God has entrusted to me, and, see, and yeah, okay, fine, counting your blessings, right? We, we all know we should count our blessings. Well, you got to count your curses as well, okay? And, but you have to count your curses with thanksgiving. Does that sound insane? Do you think I care? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I can be insane. That's fine. So we're looking out at creation, and we're, we're counting everything. We're taking stock of everything that God has entrusted to us, including our difficulties, including our relational strife, including the challenges, right? All the many challenges that we, that we face. We're taking stock of everything because that's the corner of creation that God has entrusted to our care, and he wants us to embrace that in a spirit of thanksgiving. When we, guess what? When we go to pray and we start to think about all the many things that are going on in our lives, in thanksgiving, right, because we've done adoration and contrition already, so we're moving on to thanksgiving and we're looking out at the world and taking stock of what God has entrusted to our care, my whole heart is not going to be thanking God. Certainly not at the beginning. Because my problems are overwhelming, right? Aren't your problems overwhelming? We're all overwhelmed, right? No, but we can look out at the world and, say, and with, with God's strength at work in us and working through us, we can be thankful for everything that He's entrusted to our care. And we can be thankful even for the fact that He has us in that place to be a conduit of the life of heaven for that space on earth. Right, because that, that your place might be horrible, a horrible disaster, right? You might even think that to yourself. My, my life is just a horrible disaster. And if you haven't thought about that, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that after. Right? But, but the reality is that at least God has you there to channel his grace and mercy. What would that place be without you? What would that place be without an image bearer? Right? What would that place be without a conduit of divine love and grace? to water that part of the garden. So God has you there for a reason, and, and we approach that with thanksgiving because God is at work, and we want to be about God's work no matter how difficult it is. And this is why we say we persevere by faith in the life of great and costly love that God has called us to. He's called you to a renewed life so that you can be about the restoration of the world. No, it's just, it's just Thanksgiving. But we look out at Thanksgiving, we recognize still we're not up to the task. So this now is where we turn to God and pray in supplication. That's where we ask God for things. But we ask God for things in the, in the context of having praised Him for who He is, the God who washes feet, and we've thanked Him for everything that He's entrusted to our care, both quote-unquote good and bad. Now we're ready to ask him for what we need in order to be his image bearers, in order to help us bring earth to heaven and heaven to earth. And guess what? Every prayer that we pray in that context, asking God to help us in our capacity as image bearers to bring earth to heaven and heaven to earth, he answers. Hear what I said? Every prayer that you pray in that space, he answers. Because that's the plan. That's his plan. Okay, and this is, this is how then we, we give ourselves over to his rule in, in, uh, in our priestly action, and we advance his rule in the world as his kings. I said you, you are made to rule the world. You're made to rule the world. What do kings do? They rule the world with the power that they have. But the power that is to be at work in your life is the power of self-giving love. Because that's the power that Jesus is breathing into you now to animate you as his priest, as that person that he's you know, giving himself to to advance his rule. And so he's, he's pouring into you self-giving love, and you are to rule by that power. We see something of what that looks like in, in the Scriptures. Jesus says to them right there, um, there, sorry, Jesus looks at them and says, basically in a, in a commission of uh, to, uh, to be agents of his rule and to continue to affect his ministry, he says to them, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, right? Receive the Holy Spirit. 
Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is massive. This is a massive, massive challenge. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. This is you, by the way, as well, right? This is not like, okay, they, uh, there's something to Father Daniel and Father Wade do in the confessional and whatever. No, this is you. You are receiving the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And whose sins you retain are retained. How are sins forgiven? How are sins overcome? They're overcome by self-giving love. They're overcome by our loving the people that we encounter. We encounter people in slavery. They're in slavery to sin. By their sin, they have attached themselves to some idol. Right? They've, given, they've given their power over to something less than or other than the true and living God. And they find themselves enslaved. And it's ours to love them out of that slavery to sin. What Jesus is saying here is, you go out and love and do the most difficult things that love can do. Free people from the worst bondages you find them in and give them the, not only the liberating message, but the liberating life of love that I am entrusting to you. Free people, free people for full and flourishing lives. That's what you have to do. That's what we do corporately as a church. That's the work that we're caught up in. But that's what you have to do. You have to love all the way through and all the way to the end because that's the God we worship and that's the God who breathes his life into us today to inspire us, to animate and sustain us in that life of love. I do, I kind of want to, I, I know, look, I, I get it. You're done. I under, look, I get it. I get it. I understand. I'm pretty Im impervious to the thing, but I understand. I want to hang, I do want to hang out there for a lot longer. I'm not going to. I'm not going to because the important thing is not that we hear it and hear it and hear it. The important thing is that we commit to it. Right, so way back before the beginning of the, of the Lenten season, right, I sent the, the pastoral that said, this is, what we're, this is what our project is. We're doing mission statement stuff. Say, we, uh, we, we live by faith. We persevere by faith in the life of great and costly love that we've been called to. And today, having Jesus' spirit breathed into us anew, we know that we have the power and strength to get out there and do it. We know that we can persevere by faith, by entrusting ourselves to Jesus. We can persevere in the life of great and costly love that we've been called to. And we can do it because his, his own life of love is at work in us and working through us to bring that task to completion. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God, that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Mass this morning is offered for Paul Ruffin. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. 
This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of this one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, while they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through his participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in a sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Have you uh, please be seated for just one moment. We have uh, some, some of our third, fourth, and fifth grade scouts with us, and we're uh, pleased to celebrate with them today as they have earned the Parvuli Dei Award. It's the Children of God Award. The Parvuli Dei Award is a uh, Catholic Scout Award, and the purpose of the emblem is to help the boys explore a wide range of activities in order to discover the presence of God in their daily lives, especially as members of their families and parishes, and to grow in their image-bearing capacities. Uh, so uh, they, um, we congratulate them uh, with, with all sincerity uh, this morning. And I'd ask uh, all of the boys, Richard, Robert, Francis, Theodore, and Grayson, uh, to come up, and I will give them their award.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Regina Celi, Letare.